Welcome to the Miller Kite House here in Elkton, Virginia, built in 1827. This house has seen a lot of history in its short time. When I went and got, what was that? That was loud. I saw someone, it looked like they came out and then went back in. They might have been peeking at us. This room's colder than it was. Yep. Is that your name? They just hollered Jake. Jake. Yeah. This is just a really neat location. I mean, the paranormal aspects inside, just the historic value and all the history that's crammed into this house, not just in the paranormal or the civil war but i mean all the art all the all the information just archived here from this entire area is just right something else all right so what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a quick little walk through to begin our investigation we don't have any equipment with us we just have the camcorder and ourselves and we're just going to kind of brainstorm a game plan for how we're going to approach this investigation chris watch your feet in other words we're winging it Pretty much like we always do, and we're also going to let spirits know, you know, why we're here, what we're doing, and if anything happens, then that's just gravy. Oh, as we're doing the walkthrough at the end of it, can I show them the secret of the door? Yes, okay. the secret of the door. Uh, this first room, I don't remember the exact name of it, but it's it's a dark. perfect room. It's very dark. Let me turn on a light. Let there be a light. So they call this the artifact room because there's artifacts. Uh, these are, this is an actual uniform that was worn by one of the soldiers here, which is really cool. Uh, it's a complete uniform, which you don't see that too often. You usually see just a few of the items, but this seems to be almost an entire kit. And of course, a lot of this stuff, since it actually saw combat, there might be a lot of residual energy coming off of it. Not just of that, but also these cool looking swords. Everything in here can contain energy either intelligent energy or residual energy and that's kind of what we're trying to tap into tonight even, even if we don't get residual experiences i mean uh, intelligent experiences we can get the residual but some real quick before i leave this room this is an actual tombstone for a soldier we can actually zoom in you can pause the video and read that a little bit but i don't chris do you think something like this would carry residual energy uh, anything's possible to carry residual energy. I mean, it, anything from a bottle cap to a tombstone to, you know, you just never know. Yeah. And, you know, just take this opportunity too to thank the curators of the Miller Kite House. We mm -hmm. definitely appreciate oh, the opportunity yeah. to be here. And the tour they gave us earlier, just explaining awesome. everything. And of course, this is the cool little foyer stairwell they've got it decorated for christmas which i like we've never investigated a location with christmas no, decorations we have never it's kind of a first for us let's kind of festive because see they've got the christmas tree i'm going to be up front with you all right now i do not remember what most of these rooms are called i'm sorry for that uh, but basically almost every room in here has some form of activity and what I'm, what we're trying to do is in addition to trying to form a game plan, we're also trying to get a vibe of the place. You know, does it feel active right now? Does it feel quiet? Is there anything that we say or do that seems to kick off the spiritual activity? That's kind of the metal notes that we're making. And Chris, as we're you know completing the circle we started, what do you think is the most important part of the pre-investigation process? Well, I kind of think you hit the nail on the head when you're saying, you know, just pick up on the vibe of the place. You know, what are you what are you feeling? How do you feel about you know the environment, the surroundings, and <clears throat> Earlier, as we were walking around, we were making notes of like, where's the electrical wires for the case? Right. What does the heating system sound like when it kicks mm -hmm. on? Uh, there's one I will show you real quick, and you got to notice stuff like this. Like, listen, you know, where's the places in the floor that's going to make the right. noise? Uh, earlier, when I was doing my single, my solitary walkthrough, I thought I heard something upstairs, but it was just one floorboard. When you walk on it just right, it makes a moaning sound. Which could have been what I heard because when Chris was outside in the car and I was going through taking pictures after the people had left, 
I heard a female voice up here, and that could have been a floorboard. As you can see, we're now heading upstairs. This area is a bit more active, uh, they told us, than the downstairs is. We're going to go into this room first. Which this room has more to do with the Kite family than it does the Civil War history. But it's cool because, you know, every room in this house pretty much has artifacts. So that's every room is charged with residual activity. Or what we hope is charged with residual activity. And even though I've been to this room three times, I did not notice the creepy dogs. <laughs> I did not. How could you not? Well, I probably just blocked them from memory or from view. Like, that just doesn't look right. It just does not look right. And like I said, in this house, they have a ton of items that's been donated by the public and people from around town, mm -hmm. and different families. Well, they, they've kind of collected the history of Elkton and put it in this house. Like there's a, there's a lot of buildings that have been torn down. Uh, and then, you know, like I said, a lot of buildings have been torn down. They took the remnants of some of those buildings and also the photographs of the buildings, basically the memory of these places and put them in that back room. But this room is really important because this is allegedly where Stonewall Jackson slept while he was planning the 1862 Valley Campaign. Uh, this is the bed, the actual bed that they said he slept uh, on. They said it might be. Might, that's why I said alleged. Yeah, well. But this is, I have to say, other than this room, this is the coolest one in the entire house for me. There's just so much to look at in here. Yes. <laughs> We, how long do we spend in here just looking at everything? Like, oh, a good hour. Yeah. But this and is, you know, kind of like what I was telling you, the history of Elkton. You know, they've got uh, these little presentations of the former buildings, basically telling the story of the town, and they're keeping the memory of these places alive. And while they might not be there physically, they're still here in memory. And it's really cool when people do that. Here's another fine example with this case here. Any movement in this room, and that case shakes. Right. As we get back to base camp, one of the things that you know intrigued us when we were asked to come out here is the fact that Stonewall Jackson himself allegedly haunts this place. Um, and what was it they asked us to do? They're trying to get the names of Union prisoners yeah. that were here. Yeah. Because um, they got the muster rolls and the lists and all that for the sol for the uh, right. Confederate soldiers that would be yeah. here. Uh, what was the one named Sammy? I think was the name of that one that got mentioned, downstairs. Yeah. Uh, there's also a preacher that they've gotten who the preacher, it's either him or the other one, doesn't have any history to this house whatsoever, but he does have a history to Elkton and some of his stuff was moved here. And ever since they moved it, they've had his spirit come through. Right. So kind of like with you know residual activity, they're following the objects that they had direct, you know, physical use with during their lifetime. And then what was it, uh, Dabney was Stonewall Jackson's assistant or aide de camp during the war. Is that the other one that she said? I missed that one. Trying to remember. Yeah, because she said there was one of his staff members or something mm -hmm. that people have seen here. So I'm gonna get hydrated because, you know, high quality H2O. And then we're gonna set up our motion detector First, Chris, where do you think we should set this? I said we go into this dining room area in here mm -hmm. and do a uh, EVP slash ghost box slash EMF slash motion detecting thing. I think it's a great idea. So to begin our investigation, Good. we're set up here in the dining room of the downstairs Miller Kite House. We have the motion detector set up right here. We also have a chair pulled out in case anyone wants to sit down with us. We also have the K2 meter sitting in front of the chair in case someone you know wants to sit down. We're gonna start just straight up EVP. We're gonna have to keep an ear out though because there are cars going by, there's trains at some point, so there might be a lot of interference, but we will eventually transition to a spare box session. I'm gonna have the motion detector on. That's gonna be loud if it goes off. Chris, before we formally begin our investigation, anything you wanna add, anything you wanna say? No, I think we're good to go. All right, so without further ado, let us begin our investigation. All right, hello, my name is Jake and I'm here with my dad, Chris. Uh. Put the camera that way. Who's here with us? Well, 
thank you for coming in. Like I said, my name's Jake, and his no. is Chris. Do you hear that? Listen. I hear someone moving. Do you hear that? Chris. I'm trying to decide. It sounds like someone in a dress. <coughs> Hello? If that is someone we're hearing, can you please make our motion detector go off again? Yeah, if you walk in front of this white box, it'll make a sound. But we were invited by the people that own this house to come in and try to communicate with whoever may be here. We have a lot of questions we'd like to ask because there's so much history here. And we'd like to piece together some of the history of this place. So if you would like to come in and talk to us, we'd really appreciate it. We already have a chair pulled out. We have the other chairs. So feel free to come in and join us. Just if you would, please, when you enter the room, make a sound as loud as you can to let, so that we know you're here. Is there anybody in the room with us? Can you make a knocking sound like this? Chris, do you have any questions you want to ask? Not right off the bat. I just we got to come up with a better idea. Yeah. No, I'm talking about for the lighting. <laughs> Wait. I feel like I'm in half exaltation. You can't see me on the camera, but I'm like sitting it's in a chair. Funny. It's it's yeah. It's it's it a little it's funny. a little ludicrous looking. <laughs> but the battery decided to give out. So, you know, we're having to improvise using the iPhone. Which is a multi-useful device. It is. And that makes your shadow look really big behind you. Well, I'm a really tall person. I bet it looks cool though. Like, mm -hmm. you know, a classic it's, horror movie. It's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is my recreation of Nosferatu. That was perfect. That was perfect. That was perfect. So is anybody here? Hello? We'd like to come visit with you. With you. Where am I from? With you? With you. That just slipped I mean, out. That, that slipped right out of there. Did you hear that? And if you have a story to tell, we'd love to hear it so we can tell others the story. What was that? I don't know. I did you hear something? Yeah. I thought I heard something. I saw someone peek around that corner. I did. I didn't see anybody peek. But I thought I heard a like a uh, best way to describe it like a mewling sound. Hmm. I saw someone peek around the corner right there at the stairs. I keep hearing noises. I'm not. I think I'm still trying to get adjusted to the sounds of this place. We gotta keep in mind with as many knickknacks and artifacts and whatnots and all that sitting around, the slightest mm -hmm. little move like we'll make a move, you know, right? Now this floor is pretty solid in here. Yeah, but in the other room's not so. But much. I did think I, I thought I heard a couple of things, and not the cars going by outside, mm -hmm. not nothing like that. So 
Uh, there's a car going by, something caught Would I head. say definitely that it was something paranormal? No, because I'm not 100% convinced, but, but I did hear something. I have an idea, because this is open, right? Sorry. <laughs> That's open, so we could hear clearly into the room above us, that artifact room. That's, yeah. Could we take the motion detector, put it at the foot of those stairs, because that's where the servants would have been. At the and top they, of the stairs? Yep, and then come back down here. Well, remember, this the, the part of the house that we're in now used mm -hmm. to be part of the servants' rooms. Right. It would have been this room, these mm -hmm. stairs, and yeah. those two back rooms upstairs. Right. They would have used those stairs, though. So there, and plus, we've heard something on these stairs. I saw something by that tree. And they said this section here used to be a porch. Right. And then... That in the kitchen in there would have been part of the main house, right? Yep. Am I yeah. remembering that right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, I think we should take this and put it upstairs. The table? Oh. The table? <laughs> yeah, let's take the whole table and put it upstairs. <laughs> but no, could you grab the motion detector since I've got the lighting? Yeah. All right, so I guess we'll just put this in the room up above us, and then we'll come back here and we'll see what can happen. Should we? We don't need the K2. We'll be literally right back. What about this? Yeah, let's go and take it just in case. Or should we leave it to see if anybody says anything? That's a good idea, let's leave it. Yeah. So to summarize what Chris and I just rambled about, we're going to take the motion detector and we're going to put it in the room that's directly above us because those stairs where we were hearing stuff move around and where I thought I saw something, that connects to this room. Not so, this no, not this one, but the run back here. So if there's someone hanging out on the stairs, this motion detector will get them and because this is open, we'll be able to hear it. That should be going Is there on. some wait? <coughs> That's about the same time that it went off the last time. So is there some kind of time delay? No, not on that. You sure? Yes. We've used that thing a million times. Well, let's wait and see if it goes off again. We do also have to take into consideration the spirits are still getting used to us. Chris, in your opinion, because you've been out of investigation for a lot longer than I have, how long does it typically take for um, the spirits to get... Did you hear that? That was a voice. Stay right where you are. No. No, that was a male voice. No, there's... I heard a male voice. What did you hear? I heard that. You heard a step? I heard a voice. No, not the step. Mm -hmm. That. Ah. Uh, it's me. There's something here. When you step here, it triggers something. Well, why did oh. That's kind of what it sounded like. That's what it was. Cool. And that's why I'm here. Perfect. I just literally noticed that. The animal? Uh-huh. Is that supposed to be a dog or a pig? Or, or a wolf? Aardvark? Sure, we'll go with that. Alright, so now we're going to do a spirit box session here in the dining room. We are scanning, just so you know, at 100 milliseconds on forward sweep. We have the voice recorder right here. Chris is there. K2 meter is still right there, still on in front of this chair. Chris, before we begin the spirit box session, anything you want to say? No, I'm just anxious to get started. All right. Would you take the camera? Yes. Actually, what we can do, we'll just do this. We'll be hands off. You have blinded me so many times. It's real no. rusty at this. <laughs> We're going to set. <coughs> camera is looking directly at Spirit Box, so we can better record the audio from it. It will make it tough to uh, see things, but it'll be easier to hear.
Would you like to talk to anyone that's here in the house tonight?
Maybe it's me, dude, because this camera is getting insanely hot again. What's and I was filming your chin, sorry. <laughs> It's a very nice chin. It's tent. a very nice chin. Yeah, everybody. a very good chin. I've worked many years to get this chin. Let's go ahead and end this, take a quick little break before we head upstairs. You cool with that? I'm cool with that. All right. We're signing off for the time being, everybody. Thank you all who spoke. We'll be back here in a little bit. So, Chris, tell me about the fatigue you experienced in the dining room. So, we were in the dining room, and uh, we are doing the EVP in the spare box section, and I could just feel myself just getting wore down more than usual. I mean, I'm a pretty kinetic person. If I'm not moving, you know, I get a little sleepy anyway. But this was something else. It was just like, uh, like, I'm just, I was ready for, for bed. And then we got up and got out of the room, and then I felt fine after that. So do you think something was draining your energy so that it could do something? Possible, you can't rule that out. Or it could be just general fatigue. Could be general fatigue, but I slept well last night. We, you know, we had a good lunch, and there's too much in this house to be bored. I yeah, mean, there's so much. That artifacts room, that was. Yeah. You can just get, like you said, you can get lost in that room. Easy. I mean, just you know, because you want to see everything, you want to look at everything, and lemons. We have to find some lemons. I'm sure there's lemons upstairs. I keep looking for I don't see them. There has to be lemons upstairs. So Chris, for those people that might not know, explain the significance of lemons. So General Stonewall Jackson, one of the things he was known for was lemons. The man would actually eat raw lemons. And I think one of the, the only complaints he had about his wife was that her lemonade was too sweet. And uh, so he just, he loved lemons. So for a place that he supposedly haunts not to have a lemon, I think is wrong. No, I'm kidding, this is a great house. There's just so much history here. I caught myself, like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't stop reading note cards while you know we were in that last room. So thoroughly, I mean, if nothing else, paranormal aside, this is a place well worth visiting. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, we're about to head upstairs. We haven't investigated upstairs from aside from when we set the motion detector up and then when I went and got What was that that was loud That was something at the front door Hello. I thought it came from in here The dining room Hello That was, that was pretty loud. That was really loud. There's nothing in here moving. And the reason I'm not following him quickly is because I have the tripod set up and, well, it's, I'm not trying to destroy anything. See, to me, it sounded like it was coming from the foyer here. Well, even in here, I mean, nothing moved. Right. Here, try knocking on the door. Like, do a knock on the door, see what it sounds like. That's not really what I heard. And of course, the door is locked. Right. Anything here? No. Nope. nope. All right, so far our investigation of the Miller Kite Museum is going pretty well. Um, it started out kind of slow. We did have the motion detector go off pretty quickly, but like Chris said, that could have been simply because of the timer. Um, we've been hearing some things like footsteps, uh, little phantom voices. Now, a few of the voices we were able to debunk as bells and the creaking of the floors, which sometimes creaking of the floors can sound like voices. It sounds weird, but it's true. Um, we had a few responses uh, when we would ask questions like, can you make a sound? If there's someone in the room, can you please do this? We did get a few responses that way. But when we turned on Spirit Box, we were expecting, or at least I was expecting, a little bit of an increase, but we didn't really have that much of an increase until we went into the war artifacts room, which has actual uh, Civil War uniforms, has you know stuff that actually saw combat. And I think that energy is a bit more powerful than a normal artifact, simply because you know a battle is a very intense experience. And the fact that these items were present and that there's an entire room full of these objects, it almost supercharges an area. And we were getting some really good intelligent responses. We were getting uh, names, 
I had someone respond when I asked if you were in the 10th Virginia Infantry. I think I heard a voice. I wasn't sure if it said yes or no or something like that, but we did get a response. Uh, we did get a response to talking about General Jackson, Stonewall Jackson. We got responses to talking about some of the artifacts, so I can't wait to go back and clean those up. But we're about to head upstairs and start our investigation there, which is gonna be cool because to my knowledge of this place, the upstairs is a lot more active than the downstairs. And the fact that we've had a lot of really cool experiences so far downstairs, that makes me really anxious for the upstairs. Jacob, resist the history. I can't. <laughs> I noticed this. You know, before we head back downstairs, I would really like to hear from General Jackson. Stonewall, are you here? I just got this pain in my chest, like right around here. I just felt like a really sore spot. <laughs> What did it say? I don't know. It's like right in this area. Not my heart, but like this area. It's like a searing pain. What do you think it is? What's your first, or your almost, what's your gut reaction? <laughs> you mean my chest reaction? Your chest reaction. The first thing is maybe it's the pain that a soldier was feeling. Possibly. Was there a soldier here that was shot in the chest or in the rib cage? Why am I feeling pain in my ribs? I'm not really feeling it now. We're just real quick. So, any visuals, images, thoughts, ideas went with it? No, the first thing I thought of was soldier. But I was asking about General Jackson, so. I thought that was kind of a natural progression. Well, he just got, he got shot in the arm and the armpit right. and... What was that? It's not like he said, no, he didn't. What well, do you mean he didn't? Where was he shot then? He didn't take a slug in the chest, did he? You what? He didn't get hit in the chest, did he? I thought it was... No, I thought it was his arm. Or his shoulder. Do we get... Are we remembering that wrong? Maybe. Did, did General Stonewall Jackson get shot in the chest? Did you just say yes? It did say yes. That was the spirit voice. I'm going to go get my phone. I'm looking that up. So... General Stonewall Jackson was shot in his left arm and right hand. I thought it was just his arm. Yeah. <clears throat> Why are the spirit saying he was shot in the chest? I know you tried to answer the last time, but I, I couldn't make out what you were saying. What was that? General Jackson, can you change your presence? Smell. That's that cigar smell again. Yeah. Everyone, he, but he didn't smoke cigars. No. Who's smoking cigars up here? Periodically through the night, we've got, we've, the smell of cigars, and it's... That's the same one from uh, the room downstairs. Oh, and I didn't think of something until uh, just now. Right. You said that you thought it smelled too light to be a uh, cigar. Uh, Virginia tobacco, because I everybody are watching, I smoke cigars here and there, but I smoke like the heavy tobacco, like a dark tobacco. A Virginia tobacco is going to smell different uh -huh. than the ones that I usually smoke, and it's going to smell probably a little bit lighter. That's so. what I Yep. What was the name we got downstairs? Robert, are you here? Is that your smoke? Were you given 
permission to be in here? I heard a voice say yes. Yeah. Who gave you permission? You know only certain people are allowed to be in here, right? Can you tell us why you're here? Oh my God, it is strong over yeah. here. General Jackson, do you give Robert permission to be in here? That's definitely a cigar. Yeah. Captain Kite, is that you? Who's got a cigar lit? I want to say they're sitting in that chair. That's what I'm getting a visual of. Yeah. They're in that chair. That's good for Virginia tobacco there. Where did you get that cigar? Do you like us being here visiting? Totally off topic, but did I give you the car keys? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Oh my God, that cigar smoke is killing me. I want a cigarette so bad. Pipe? Hear that? Did it say pipe? It said pipe. So you're smoking a pipe, not a cigar? What did it say? I couldn't hear it. You know my ear. I heard it say like okay or something like that. So I'm sorry. I mean, so it's a pipe, not a cigar. It, it smells good. I even seen some old pipes made out of clay. What kind of pipe do you use? Whoa. That was cool. Did you hear that? I heard it. Did you make I heard, well, to me it sounded like a male voice and then a female voice respond to him. I heard two separate voices. Could you tell what they were saying? No. But they weren't talking to us. They were talking to each you other. You think they were talking to each other? Point the camera that way. I'll talk to you in that background. Who's in that room back there? Who's in that room back there? I saw someone. It looked like they came out and then went back in. They might have been peeking at us. This room's colder than it was. Yep. Is that your name? They just hollered Jake. Jake. Yeah. I'm Jake. What can I do for you? Wait here, I'll stay in here. You go in there. Let okay. Know what you hear. Yeah, this room's frigid. That room's frigid. This is frigid. It wasn't it was cool earlier, but not frigid. Yeah. Does someone in here want me? Hello, I'm back. Let's see. Something gets Jake. Somebody in here asking. Somebody in here asking for Jake. Who was calling my name? Okay, that was creepy. That was a creepy sound. Why does everything turn creepy with you? I don't know. It's your Gene. Who was that? Who just spoke? Identify yourself. Oh. 
Can you let us know where you are? You have our attention. Why did you call my name and not Chris's? Isn't it obvious? I'm the full one. They're scared of me. Yeah, that's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that from all the way in here. Can you do the rub and yell for us? What does it sound like? Did you hear that? Chris? Yeah. Did you hear that little yell? Did you ask for a rebel yell? I asked if you could do the rebel yell, and I heard like, yeah. I heard it in the back. There was a yell. Well, cool. Did you just do the rebel yell for us? So we're about to head upstairs. And we just did about an hour and a half long Facebook live stream, which is something that we do for our fans. Whenever we go to an investigation location, we typically do one or two live streams. It's just the way we get people involved. But for this live stream, we decided to go upstairs. And it was cool because upstairs we've been told was the most active part of the house. It's allegedly where Stonewall Jackson's spirit is and a whole bunch of other stuff. So we had a few things happen, kind of like downstairs. We had a smell of uh, tobacco, cigars, something like that. We smelled that off and on upstairs. Now the spirit that identified itself as Robert, given the smell, he actually told us it wasn't a cigar, it was a pipe. And as we started doing the session, the spirits got more and more active. We were hearing stuff, I was seeing stuff, and at one point, Chris was in the Stonewall Jackson room, and I was in the room across the hall, which we'll show you here in a second, and a voice said loud and clear, Jake. It was a deep male voice, it was really cool. So for some reason, the spirits up there were calling my name. We thought we heard kind of like a, I don't know, it's like a breathy sound, it was very weird. And at one point in school, I asked if a spirit could do the rebel yell, and I'll have to amplify the audio. I heard like a yeah type sound. It wasn't the rebel yell that matches the descriptions, but it was almost like a, a battle type yell. So I'm really looking forward to getting back up there. And you know, with how that last session went, I, I can only imagine how active this is gonna be. So we're about to head upstairs. We just did a Facebook live stream and to say it was active would be putting it lightly, wouldn't you say, Chris? Definitely had some moments there. So we're gonna take the EVP recorder, the K2 meter, which Chris is holding in his left hand right there. Nice camera work. No problem. And the spirit box. I already have the rod of a diode up there. As you see the rod of a diode, I have it in a centralized location. I don't know why I decided to hide it, but that's what we're going with. It's probably the wires in crap. It is. All right, so starting out the EVP slash spirit box session upstairs, Jake and Chris. I'm gonna be honest, the reason we're in here is I'm making sure the dolls are still in their case. And they are. Yes. For now. Hello, is there anyone up here with us tonight? Chris, do you have anything to say before we begin the spirit box session? Not right now. I'm just curious to see if some of the same voices come back through. Okay. And the main thing to watch out for <coughs> is the smell of pipe. Pipe and the dogs. Yeah. All right, hello, is there anyone in this room with us tonight? We were up here a little while ago, do you remember us? When we were up here a little while ago, someone called my name. Who was that? Did you hear that? I did. That sounded like a little kid. Whoever that was, thank you for talking to us. Can you say that again, please? I couldn't quite understand what you're saying. Let's turn the radio. Is there anybody here? 
here with us tonight. Are there any soldiers? Did you hear that? Yeah. I heard what I said, uh-huh. Are you an enlisted man or an NCO? Or are you a prisoner? Florence, I'm going to set stuff on this quilt you made. Do you mind? Is that okay with you? You just said uh huh. Well, thank you. Thank you, Florence. I really appreciate it. How are you doing tonight? Thomas Jackson, are you here? I heard a voice. Oh, I'm sorry, General Jackson, are you here? Hey Chris, a Mel Bush just said, hey Chris. Hey. How you doing? You want to talk to Chris? See anything cool? Aside from the obvious? Oh, I was going to say, just... So much cool to look at. That voice just said, Howdy. Howdy. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? I'd like to talk to y'all more. This has been a thoroughly enjoyable investigation. Did I see the camera? No. It's fine. I could even hold on night, I'll hold it for a little bit. Are there any of the kite children here? Chris, do you have any questions? Yeah, two trains traveling, one from the north, one from the south. One leaves Chicago at 8.30 a.m. One leaves Tallahassee at 6 p.m. When will they meet? Nice. Well, shot. <coughs> no, we really enjoyed being with y'all this evening. Uh, just you know, one last or you know, one last time, really, because we'll be going back downstairs there a little bit and leaving. Does anybody have anything they want to ask us? Anything you'd like for us to pass on? Anything you'd like to say? Did anyone die in this room? What did it say? Radio. Then if we ever come back, we'll go bring the lemons next time. Real lemons. You think you'd like that? Sammy, are you here with us? Can you say goodnight?
got this cobweb showing on my arm. Maybe somebody's trying to drag you out of the room. <laughs> Do you not want me in here? No, I don't care. <laughs> no, oh, not you. Yeah. Hello. You can't hear that thing sizzling. No. No. It doesn't. The diode is a recorder. It doesn't make sounds. Okay. Okay. Is anybody in here? We're getting ready. What is that? Radio. We're getting ready to leave. Is there anybody in here or is it bedtime? He just said get out. All right, we'll okay. leave. Sorry to disturb you. Was that you, Florence? I'll come back up for the diode. You sure? Yeah, I'll come back up for it. By yourself? Yeah. Good night. <laughs> Who's over there? What'd you see? What'd you hear? Hey everyone. Chris, who's at the door? Who goes listen? Ready? Yeah. You can hear it when. Hear the sound? Mm hmm. That's the hissing sound. It dawned on me that. So, what was the, at the door? Chris, what'd you find? I found lemons. You found lemons. You did it. I'm so glad. Stonewall, what do you think about that? See, he's ecstatic. Yeah. All right, so we've wrapped up our investigation of the Miller Kite House. It's close to midnight. And Chris, what are your final thoughts on the investigation? I really enjoyed being here. I mean, mm -hmm. I've said it multiple times throughout the night. The history of the place is phenomenal, and not just the house. I mean, it's collected all this history from all the surrounding area and brought it to one place. And it's just just a wealth of information. Yeah. Uh, paranormally speaking, uh, it, there's some things on there that I'm going to wait until analysis mm -hmm. to really make up my mind. But there's no doubt in my mind that something happened yeah. know, along the way. Uh, I won't say. I think there was enough interaction there to warrant another investigation. But I'm stumbling over my words. Yeah. Well, there were a lot of experiences that, you know, it wasn't necessarily while we were investigating, it was just while we were being ourselves. Right. While we were, you know, well, right. just looking at stuff, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't as active as when we were actively looking for it. That's where we were just chilling. This is a very laid back haunted house. It is, you know, haunted houses. You think of, oh, you have to be, you know, you're intense. You're always looking for it. This is one of those places that you feel like you can just kind of go about your business and casually look for it. But that's kind of the vibe I get from it. Yeah, and even when something 
other quote unquote otherworldly happened, I never felt spooked. The only time I felt spooked was when I thought the front door was open. Right, which you know the door's locked. Right. There's no way it could have been. But you know, we don't know who has the key. We don't know, you mm -hmm. know. But when I thought the door was open, that was the only time I was like, "Hang on a second. you know. But other than that, even with the loud bang, or I, I never felt on edge, on edge. Yeah, you know, during any of it. Yeah, and that's that's kind of a new experience. And this is one of the few locations we've investigated where you know most of our experiences weren't from the spirit box. We got a lot of great spear box responses, but you know, you have a place like if you look at our St. Albans stuff, our Paris Cemetery, uh, the Talia Farrow House, most of our evidence from that place was spear box. Right. It was because, you know, we use it because we want that real time connection so that we can, you know, make changes as the spirits introduce themselves. If a new spirit comes in, we can adjust our game plan according to that. At a place like this, we didn't need a spare box. No. I mean, spare box, you know, it, it does get annoying. You know, the white noise constantly. After a while, your ears get used to it. You learn how to channel that. But there are times where it is straight up annoying. And so for a lot of our investigation tonight, we had it off and it worked. It felt more like this, this felt like a more homey type yeah, well, you almost felt invited in. Yeah, I was about to say, when, you know, when we first got here, you said, uh, what was it that you said? You, know, you felt like you knew everything about the house, even though you had never been here. Yeah, but not in a way, right. as in a, it just felt familiar. Mm -hmm. It felt, you know. Are you sure it wasn't in a way? Who knows? I, I stole want that. that. I, I stole that. You know what comedian I stole that from? What? The oh. No. You don't know? No. Idiots are everybody. So thank you all for tuning in to this episode of The Five Files Season 2 premiere. Leave a comment if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a great day, everyone.